Roles in the family. Roles are the proper roles are for the proper functioning of the family. Now this is so crucial. Roles do not imply, notice the word, superiority, inferiority, or inequality. Men and women are equal. The Bible tells us, Galatians 3.26, there is neither Jew nor Greek, there is neither slave nor free man, there is neither male nor female. You are all one in Christ Jesus. So we have different roles. In an office, you have different roles. Just because you are an assistant, just because you are a vice president, does not mean the president is more important. Understand? Doesn't mean he's superior. Does not mean he is uh, more valuable. Everybody is equal in the eyes of God. Let me repeat. Roles are for the proper functioning of the family. You agree? Roles do not imply superiority. Next, roles are determined by God, not by society or ability. I remember a couple. The husband says, my wife is better in management, better in making money, so she's the head of the family. That's wrong. Roles are necessary for effectiveness in accomplishing God's purpose. Roles are needed for harmony. Roles are needed for modeling. This is God's design to accomplish His purpose for harmony, for modeling. You will see it as we go along, why that is so crucial. When a husband and a wife do not fulfill their God-given roles, there is long-term negative impact on the family. In the Philippines, can you tell me, are we matriarchal or are we patriarchal? Matriarchal? I think so. And all the ladies know this. <laughs> ladies, who is the head of the home? You, the husband, but you are the neck that turns the head. <laughs> so you be careful. Conflict, disharmony, chaos in the family. Gender confusion. This is a big one. If you don't do the roles properly, you'll have gender confusion. Bad examples. God is not glorified. I'm going to talk to you now. Men. Men, you have two important roles. Are you ready to listen, gentlemen? All right. Number one, you are to be the leader. Say that with me. Leader. So, gentlemen, read the verse. Men, ready? Go. <laughs> So according to this verse, who is deciding who is head, who is not head? Who? God. And what is God's instruction for men? You are the head, leader. What does leadership mean? It does not mean like this, okay? It does not mean you lord it over. It does not mean you are lazy. Understand? So what is leadership? Gentlemen, this will shock you. Read the following verses. Okay? The husband is to be a servant leader. What does it mean? Gentlemen, read. You But it is not so this way among you. So according to Jesus, the leadership model is servant leadership. What in the world does that mean? You are a leader, but you are a servant leader. Harvard Business Review discovered the best kind of leaders are servant leaders. Jesus knew this 2,000 years ago. Many years ago, the model of leadership is the military. Hierarchy, positional. Most companies have that kind of leadership. But Harvard School made research, many people made research, and they discovered the best CEO 
in the world. The most effective CEOs are CEOs who are servant leaders. Now, if they read the Bible, they would have known this a long time ago. What does it mean? It means you are responsible, but you know you are there to serve others. There is humility. There is compassion. Uh, I'm going to explain that to you. In the meantime, gentlemen, tell me, which one are you? From first, second, third, fourth, fifth. Absentee, leader. The father is present physically, but emotionally absent. Or you are the passive type. Every time there's a problem, you tell your son, ask mommy. <laughs> Crisis, ask mommy. Responsible, servant leader, or dictatorial. I am the boss here. Mrs. Who is the boss? Me. Dictatorial. What about this one? Abusive. You use physical force. Now let me ask you. Which one are you? You can only give me one number, okay? This is number one, two, three, four, five. Choose one number. So turn to you, the other men. Okay? Kasi kung mga misis, takot kayo eh. So <laughs> tell your neighbor what number are you. Okay? Whisper, whisper. Tell your neighbor because I want to ask your neighbor to do something. That's my research. Okay? Give, give, give the number. You, give your number. All right. How many of you remember one to five? If your answer is below Three, that means you are either one or two. That's your leadership style. That's your neighbor's leadership style. Can you raise your hand? Higher, higher. You are one or two. All right. How many of you are four and five? Your neighbors, four and five. Raise your hand. How many of you will never raise your hand, no matter what I do here? All right. Listen to me. Gentlemen, you sit down now. I'm going to ask the wives, without consulting your husbands, wives, you raise your hands once. How many of your husbands are below three? One, two, or three. Raise your hands. Below three, not three. Because three is an answer that I don't want to hear now because uh, I don't believe anybody is really perfect here, okay? So, raise your hands, ladies. Your husband is more or less this. Raise your hand. Okay. Ladies, your husbands are more or less this type. Raise your hands. Okay. Look. Just by the numbers. Majority is passive type. Now, I want you to think of your families. Think of your own parents. Okay? Think of your fathers. Are you not thinking of your own fathers? Now, how many of you have fathers who are Below three. They are either one or two. Below three. Your fathers, raise your hands. Higher, higher, higher. Wives, raise your hands also. You have a father. Okay. How many of you, your fathers are more or less four and five? Raise your hand. Ah, Tinamo. In this country, majority of fathers are passive. Why? I believe we don't have role models. Because the religious leaders of this country are not married. You don't have any model. And the models you have, sad to say, is from Hollywood. And sometimes Hollywood makes fun of others. All right, husbands, Read this together. The husband is responsible. That's the meaning of leader. You are responsible. Meaning, if something goes wrong with your family, God will hold you responsible, not the wife. You are responsible. I remember a man telling me, I have a problem. My wife does not listen to me. I said, the problem is not your wife. The problem is you. You are the leader. If you cannot make your wife listen to you, you are not discipling your wife. So you are the problem. 
Look at the qualifications of bishop. He must be one who manages his own household well, keeping his children under control. You know why? The next verse says, If a man does not know how to take care of his family, how can he take care of the church of God? That's that verse. So what does it mean to be a leader? You, you are a good example. You must take the initiative, gentlemen, not passive. You must plan ahead. I'm just wondering how many men will really analyze their family and then they say, you know what? I got to take initiative in this area. I got to think ahead. I set directions. I need to prepare core values for my family. I just wonder how many men are trained to do that. And I submit to you, most men do not learn how to be a husband, how to be a leader. Can I tell you why? Because there is no such course in the university. Understand? Have you attended any subject in your school, in university, how to be a husband, how to be a father? Have you? None. It's from the Bible. But in our religion, in this country, they don't really teach the Bible. So, I realize we are very blessed. We have the Bible. So, gentlemen, you are to be example. You are to take initiative. That's the meaning of leadership. The husband is accountable to God. Accountable means if something goes wrong, you're it. And then, the husband is to understand the wife. Now, this is a big one. When it comes to leadership, not only are you to be accountable, that means you have to understand your wife. Notice the word understand. How is that used? Everybody, all, all the men only. The men, please read. Husbands, in the same way, live with your wives in an... Now, the word understanding does not mean under the saya. Hindi po kayo under, huh? but it's called understanding. Now, what does it mean, understanding? This is the meaning. Everybody read. As with, this, with someone weaker, since he is a woman, and show her honor as a fellow heir of the grace of life, so that your prayers will not be hindered. Notice, the way you treat your wife affects your prayer life. It affects your spiritual life. For that matter, it affects your financial life, it affects your career, it affects everything. You cannot divorce the how you treat your family, how you treat your children, how you treat your wife with your personal life. They are all interlinked. Therefore, gentlemen, what does it mean understanding? Notice, it says treat her as a, someone who is weaker. The word weaker does not mean weak because wives are usually stronger when it comes to endurance. It means it's delicate. I like this comparison. China, you know, like a vase. You know what? How do you pronounce the word? Vase or vase? Okay, vase. Vase, whatever, how you pronounce it. China, porcelain. That's called what? Delicate, weaker. What is a drum? Barilis. Yeah, mga lalaki, barilis tayo. Okay? We are uh, emotionally insensitive. Understand? We can take a lot of emotional uh, tension. But wives are different. So you turn to your wife, you tell your wife, I will honor you. Tell your, tell your wife now. I will honor you. Yeah. <laughs> Gentlemen, you got to understand. So, understand. Okay? Understanding. So let me ask you. Have you ever discussed with your wife what are her fears? What are her dreams? How does she feel? May I suggest you do that today? Honey baby, I've been living with you for the longest time. I don't even know what are your fears. I don't even know what are your dreams. You know why, honey? Because I'm afraid to ask you. Some men are afraid to ask. You know why, ladies? You will give them dreams that are impossible to fulfill. <laughs> so may I suggest, I always tell people, okay, just tone down your dreams, okay? <laughs> but share with him your fears, your anxiety. Is that okay with you? Yeah. So tonight, gentlemen, you know what to do. 
understanding. The husband <coughs> is to provide. What do you provide? You are expert in physical needs. What about emotional? What about spiritual needs? Okay. The husband is to protect the wife. You know, when I walked with my wife years ago in Valley Golf, and there's a lot of men, my wife noticed my posture changes. <laughs> you know why? I want those men to know, don't whistle, don't make fun of my wife, because that's our protective instinct. Now, ladies, listen to me. Would you like men to protect you? Yes or no? Yes. You know some husband, there's a danger. Oh, Mrs. Mauna ka na? Crazy. Because men, you don't know what it means to be a man. To be a man. It's exactly what the Bible is saying. You provide, you protect. And ladies, I tell you, if you have a man who will love you, who will protect you, ladies, will you submit to him? Yes. They will even die for us, gentlemen. <laughs> so husbands... You are to love your wife. So your first job is to be what? <clears throat> a leader. Your next job is to, husbands, love. Say that. Love. So, gentlemen, stand up. <laughs> Men. You are to be a lover. Say that with me. Lover. All right. Two responsibilities, gentlemen. Number one, leader. Now, a leader needs followers. So, ladies, please support him. Next, you are to be the lover. So, turn to each other men, tell them, lover boy. Lover boy, okay? Lover boy, okay? Lover boy, okay? You know why? You are to be the best lover. What does it mean to be a lover boy? Ah, you no problem. I will show you how. Read the Bible. Husbands ought to love their own wives as their own bodies. He who loves his own wife loves himself. No one ever hated his own flesh, but nourishes and cherishes it as Christ does the church. Now let me ask you, how did Christ love the church? The Bible says, as Christ loved the church. How did Christ love the church? He died. He died for the church. Now, ladies, when you go home, don't tell your husband, you're supposed to die for me. <laughs> but that's the idea. Die. Are you willing to die for your wife? I discovered I was not willing. No, seriously, years ago, we were walking, there was a dog. The dog attacked us. <laughs> but the dog did not attack me. The dog jumped on to my wife. Growling. And you know what? I just... Stood beside her. <laughs> Man, I was also afraid I didn't know what to do. <laughs> and I realized at that moment, I was not willing to die for my wife. <laughs> so I confessed to my wife, honey, I really did not want to die for you. <laughs> Gentlemen, we are selfish. So confess to your wife. Tell your wife, tonight, I'm willing to die for you. <laughs> Can you say that? <laughs> now your wife will call you. Sige nga, pakita mo sa akin. May insurance ka na ba? <laughs> Walang insurance. <laughs> okay, don't die. But you got, the, you got the message, right? So gentlemen, what does it mean to love? Gentlemen, read this. This love is unconditional. Meaning, you love your wife as is where is. Years ago, my wife was losing her hair. Before I married her, she was losing her hair. And somebody told me, don't marry her. Other problems. You know, I imagine, if my wife will lose all her hair, will I still love her? Where's my wife? Yeah, yeah. You know what? I told my wife, I told myself I would love my wife even if she loses her hair. You know why? I can buy a wig. 
Just joking, okay? But <laughs> men are selfish, okay? So, gentlemen, we need to learn this. So, love that is unconditional is what? It's a commitment towards imperfect person to seek their highest good, which oftentimes requires sacrifice. Gentlemen, you are commanded to love somebody. It's a commitment, not feeling. Number two, she's not perfect. It's imperfect. Number three, her highest good, not your own good. Our love is selfish, really. If you can learn this lesson tonight, you are a leader. What kind of leader? Servant leader. You are to love your wife unselfishly. I'm very serious. You got to love your wife and think of what's good for her, not what's good for you. That's how we are commanded to love. And this one you need to learn, you need to grow. Gentlemen, you can sit down now because I know you are dying to write down the notes. So this love is proactive, not reactive. Okay? You have to be proactive. You take action. This love nourishes and cherishes. The word nourish is meeting the needs of your wife. That's the word for nourish. The word cherish comes from the Greek word <clears throat> to cause to bloom. So when I perform weddings, I tell the men, I tell the man, look at your wife now. She is blooming, she is glowing. Ten years from now, the men here, okay, ten years from now, when I look your, at your wife, I want to see her even younger, glowing, smiling. Understand? Ladies, if you are not happy, you age faster. Do you know that? If you are always smiling and happy, you will never age. Do you know why? The beauty will come out. Amen? So you tell your wife now. You tell your wife beside you. Tell your wife, I will cherish you. I will nourish you. Gentlemen, you're like a gardener. You put fertilizer, water, sunlight. That's what you need to do. Now, the greatest need of a wife is love. The greatest fear of a wife after marriage is to be treated, what? As a sex object, okay? I mean, that's the fear of women. So God knows. God says, you know what? Once you marry her, you make sure you love her because that's her greatest fear. The greatest fear of any woman is to be taken for granted and to be treated as a sex object only. So I tell the men, do you hug your wife every day? Do you kiss her every day? You know why most women tell us, my wife, my husband will only kiss me when he wants sex. You know, gentlemen, the wife knows your move. Alam na nila, move one, move two, move number three. Ano yung kilos na ganyan? So they don't get excited. However, I always tell people, if you want to have sex on Friday night, you be a lover boy starting Monday. Be nice Monday, be nice Tuesday, be nice Wednesday, be nice Thursday. And on Friday, ladies, okay, man. But men are different. You know, men don't understand this. So the idea is this. Don't take her for granted. So, these are the needs of the wives. Gentlemen, you may not know this. Number one, your wife wants affection. Love, but affection. She wants affirmation. You, you have to use words to affirm her. And gentlemen, your wife wants attention. Time. And then, she wants you to lead. Spiritual leadership. Financial leadership. She wants security. You have to grant her security. She wants family commitment. Some men told me, dami dami yun. Well, that's what a wife wants. So, gentlemen, are you listening to me? If we have time, we can discuss each one. Affection, affirmation, attention, leadership, security, family. If your wife does not experience this, your love is not sufficient. You know why? She does not feel it. Now I'm going to ask my wife to share with all of you the role of the wives. Okay, ladies, it's our turn. That's okay. Do you want to know the rest of the dog story? Okay, so he was standing there, and so the dog was growling, going for my neck, so I grabbed the dog to protect myself, and the dog bit my arm. <clears throat> and so my, we told the driver, of my neighbor, to watch the dog. I was flying to the States, and my husband said, watch the dog. And so uh, maybe oh, two weeks later, a week later, he checked with the driver, how's the dog? And the driver said, okay. My husband said, where's the dog? And the driver said, um, well, actually, we ate it. So, <laughs> so I ended up getting rabies shots. But, you know, I love my husband unconditionally. Too, so praise God. Anyway. 
Um, he repented. No, he's wonderful. That was just a story that taught him a great lesson. In fact, he told the, do the driver, if you don't tell me the truth, you're in deep trouble. So that's why he told the truth. He became very protective. So now, ladies, what is our role? Our role as a wife is to be a helpmate to our husband. Let's read this verse. Then the Lord God said, it is not good. Read with me, for a man to be alone, I will make him a helper suitable for him. Now, when you hear the word helper, how's your reaction? Positive or negative? Positive, negative. Many people think of helper in a negative mindset. But actually, it's not an inferior role. In fact, God himself calls himself our helper. He said, the Holy Spirit, whom I will send to you, will be your helper. God is there to assist us. It's a noble role. And it's not inferior because remember, Peter said from the Bible, there's no more Jew or Greek, male or female, slave or free man, but we are all equal in Christ. So it's, we're equal, but it's a functional role for the proper running of the family. In a company, how many presidents do you have? You only have one. If you have two, you have a lot of trouble. And in a family, you cannot have two leaders. So for the smooth running of the family, God has given us the role of helper. Now, interesting, the man sa God says, I will make a helper suitable for him. The word suitable means comparable, means a compliment. So hold up your hand, ladies, to hold your right hand. What do you notice about your hand? Look at it. What do you notice? You have five fingers. You also have five spaces. So if this is your husband, not suitable for a man to be alone, hold up your other hand, okay? You also have five fingers and spaces. So if the fingers are the strengths and the spaces would be what's lacking, when you put them together, what happens? You fill in the spaces of each other and you become a team to accomplish God's purposes. So have you heard the saying, opposites attract? Is it true about you and your husband? Are you opposites? OK, it's true. Opposites attract. After marriage, they attack. Is that true also? <laughs> OK, so can I tell you this? Unite, don't fight. Turn to your spouse and say, unite, don't fight. Celebrate your differences, because you're different by design. Embrace it. And God has a purpose for you as a husband and wife team to serve him. Okay, you can sit down, ladies. So, helpmate, an excellent wife. Who can find Proverbs 31, 10 to 12 cent? For her worth is far above jewels. The heart of her husband trusts in her, and he will have no lack of gain. She does him good and not evil all the days of her life. So, we should strive to be that excellent wife, and we are of great value, God says. And what is our job description from God? What's our job description? She does him good and not evil all the days of her life. So, how many days of your life are you supposed to do your husband good? All. So, on a scale of 1 to 10, how are you doing? Ask your husband. Okay, that should be our mindset, ladies, that we are to do our husband good. That is our accountability to God because God has given us this honorable role of being our husband's helpmate. So what does it mean to be a helpmate? Well, it means that we are going to help, assist, aid, support, and I would add encourage our husband. No one in this world really cares about your husband as you should. He goes to the office, and what do they want? They want him to perform. They want him to do a good job. So there's a lot of pressure. When he comes home, he should feel like he is the most important person in the world to you and your family. That's why we need to prioritize him and to encourage him. Ladies, can I say, we should be his cheerleader. Cheerleader. Say that. Cheerleader. We should be there to cheer him on, to compliment him, encourage him, and then, of course, to do our husband good all the days of our life, and to be the home manager under his authority. So what does this mean? Your husband is over you, even if you're the home manager. See, we women, when something's given to us to manage, we think, 
It's my responsibility, don't butt in. Is that right? Okay, but actually, he is always our authority, so he has the right at any point in time to tell you what you should be doing in the home, and you should appreciate it. Uh, we had a helper, and um, it was taking care of these hundreds of birds that Peter had in our house, and he said one day, Diana, get rid of her. I don't, there's something wrong with her. And I said, but you had gotten her for your birds, and if I get rid of her, what's going to happen? And so I didn't get rid of her because I thought I'm managing the house, and so he should just trust me. But you know what happened? He has, men have, um, the, are our leaders, and we need to listen to them, to follow them. What happened was this helper had an affair with our Christian driver. Had I listened to him and even though I'm managing the home, come under his authority, that would not have happened. So ladies, we are under the authority of our husband, even as our home manager. And the older women are to encourage the younger women to love their husbands, to love their children, to be sensible, pure workers at home, kind, being subject to their own husbands, so that the word of God will not be dishonored. So what is God's priority here for us as wives? What are the priorities? Can you see? Who's first? Husband, then who's next? Children, and then to manage the home. So these are God's priorities. Of course, first priority, put up your hands. Put up your hands again. First priority should be God. Second priority should be spouse, husband. Third priority should be children. And then, of course, managing the home and the other things God has for you to do. But ladies, let me ask you, after you get married, and have children, who becomes your priority? Your children. Why? We think he can take care of himself. He's a big man. We need to take care of the children. Have you had those thoughts? Well, one day I was preparing a talk, a message, and my husband came in to ask me to do something that I thought he can do for himself. In fact, I thought, doesn't he see I'm doing something important here? He's interrupting my schedule. Have you ever had those thoughts? Yes, okay. Well, you know, God was quick to rebuke me. In fact, God told me, Diana, Peter is not an interruption to your schedule. Peter is your priority schedule. Ladies, your husband is your priority. And your children need to see that because it will help them to also respect him and understand that he is their authority. So, home manager. In today's society, we women are taught that to be significant, we need to be out working. We need to be having a career to be achieving something for ourselves. Well, while this is good, this is a pressure that's being put onto us, but what happens? We are working outside, taking care of somebody else's business or our own business. You come home to your priorities, and how are you? Are you tired? You're giving them leftover time. They want you. They're so excited. Mommy's home. Mommy, mommy, mommy. And you're just so exhausted. So I don't want to give you a guilt trip, but I have to say this to you. God's priority is your family. And if you could pray and ask God, could you give me a flexi schedule work where I can stay at home and take care of my family. And what I did, what we did, I did, we decided to homeschool our children. So I really made them a priority. And if any of you are interested, we have a wonderful accredited homeschool program for the Philippines. It changed the chemistry of our family. It was an investment of my life, which I am so thankful for. I look back to those days, and I praise God for that choice. We were able to input character to our children. We were able to model loving God and teaching them God's word. So we really took this to heart. Now, the Bible says that we are to teach, older women are to teach younger women to be subject to their own husbands so that the word of God will not be dishonored. You see, when we are submitting to our husbands, then the word of God is honored. If we are not, it's dishonored. So now this brings us to our second role. What's our first role? Help mate. What's our second role? Submit. Okay, stand up, ladies. Let's read this. Stand up. Submit. Please stand up. Submit. Stand up. <laughs> okay. Ephesians 5, 22 to 24. Let's read this together. 
Put some energy into it. Wives, be subject to your own husbands as to the Lord, for the husband is the head of the wife, as Christ also is the head of the church. But as the church is subject to Christ, so also the wives ought to be to their own husbands in everything. So wives, what is our role here? Submit. What does submit mean? Subject to. Actually, it's a military term. It means as a, a legion would align themselves under the commander for the purpose of going to war, then it means that we voluntarily come under the authority of our husband to accomplish God's purposes because the fact is we are in a spiritual battle. Satan is attacking the family, and Satan knows that divided we fall and united we stand. So submission is a way of protecting our family from demonic attack. Okay, ladies, you can sit down. So the, this is interesting. Let's analyze it. In the same way, you wives be subject to your own husband. You must know your husband. You must know what he wants you to do for him. Not every man is the same. Do not compare him to your father. Do not compare him to your brother or to your old boyfriend. Do not compare your husband to any man. Be subject to your own husband. And how are we to submit to our husband according to this? As to the Lord. It means with the same conscientiousness that you would submit to Jesus, you are to submit to your husband. Now, it also means that you do it for Jesus, and it also means that you do it by the power of Jesus, and it also means that you do it to please Jesus, and you trust yourself to Jesus when your husband makes decisions that you feel may not be the best. So, it's an act of faith, ladies, to submit is an act of faith, and it's to the Lord. Now, I'll tell you what happened. We got married. I had studied about submission, gone to classes, and I thought it would be no problem. But not long into the marriage, I remembered I was getting frustrated with submission. And I told God one night, I don't want to submit. My husband was sleeping, and I was so irritated beside him. I got up, and I went to talk to God, and I said, God, I don't want to submit. And you know, God is very patient with us. God spoke to me in my heart, and he said, Diana, you don't have to submit. And I thought, what? That's, I like that. He said, it's an act of your will. You don't have to submit. And so I said, okay, what do you mean? And then God explained it to me in my mind. He said, you can have your own way, but if you want my blessing, you want your husband to cherish you, and you want to accomplish my purposes for your life, then you must submit to your husband. And you know, it really hit me. Because I realized that this choice would impact the future of our family. And so that night, I decided to submit to my husband. You see, before, when he would ask me to do something, I'm smiling on the outside, but I'm really angry on the inside. Have you had that experience? Like you have a cup of coffee and you want to accidentally spill it on him? Oh, no. <laughs> yes, I had all those feelings. But you know, the next day, after I prayed that night... As unto the Lord, the next day when he asked me to do something, I did it with a smile in my heart because I was doing it for Jesus to accomplish his plans for our life. And I praise God that I made that choice. So, ladies, it's unto Jesus. Turn to your husband and say, I will submit to you as unto the Lord. Okay. Or to your friend, I will submit to my husband as to the Lord. And if you're not married, I will submit to my future husband as to the Lord. We are to submit to our husband in some things or in everything. Everything. We had this conversation one day. Peter said to me, so do you think you're a submissive wife? And I said, well, yes, I do, Peter. He said, well, yes and no. And I said, what do you mean? He said, you submit in what you like to submit, but you conveniently forget to do what you don't want to do. Are we guilty? Yes, we do what we want to do. So that's not really submission. Submission is really doing what you don't want to do. So, that's what submission is, ladies. We are to submit in everything. In the same way, you wives, be submissive to your own husbands, so that if any of them are disobedient to the word, they may be one without a word, as they observe your chaste and respectful behavior. So, ladies, the Bible says that we are not to nag our husbands. Do you know that? Are we naggers? No. Are, really? Yes? Sometimes. Okay, sometimes. 
But can I tell you something? When you're nagging your husband, you are speaking so loud they cannot hear the voice of God. You become a wedge between God and your husband. Little, you become the Holy Spirit Junior, and you're trying to make your husband into your image, and it doesn't work. Only God can change the heart. So can I tell you a secret, ladies? Stop nagging your husband and nag God. You can nag God because God says to pray about everything. So you nag God. God, there he does it again. God, speak to him. Because when you talk to God, then God will talk to your husband. But if you're talking to your husband so loud, he won't hear the voice of God. So the Bible says, if your husband is disobedient to the word, they will be one without a a word. Did you read that? They will be one without a word as they observe your chaste and respectful behavior as a wife. Let me tell you a story. A friend of mine called us one night. She said, I'm in the bathroom. My husband's banging on the door, and he's telling me to stop going to the Bible study. And if I keep on going to the Bible study, he thinks I'm changing religion. He's going to kick me out of the house. And so I said to her, well, I think it's a good idea to stay in the bathroom tonight. You can stay there, but tomorrow... We'll talk to you. So the next day, she came and she talked to me and Peter. And we told her, do you know what? You be the best wife you can be. You be so submissive to your husband. You be the best helpmate to him. And let him see Jesus through your behavior. So one year later, we were in a Bible, not a Bible study, in a wedding. And I was a sponsor with her husband. And beside him, beside me, was a lady And this lady leaned across me, and she said to the husband, Hey, I heard you've been attending Bible study. And then he said, he turned and leaned across me and said, Well, yes, I am attending Bible study. He said, Do you know why? When my wife started attending Bible study, and she came to really know Jesus, her life changed so much in a positive way. And I became the recipient of those changes. So why would I not go to Bible study? You see, ladies, there's so much power in submission. When you allow the Holy Spirit to live his life through you for your husbands to see Jesus, it becomes a conviction. Today, that man is walking with God, and they're serving God together. So what they need to see is our chaste and respectful behavior. And ladies, we put a lot of focus on the external. It says, but don't merely focus on the external, but let it be the hidden person of your heart with the imperishable quality of a gentle and quiet spirit, which is precious in God's sight. How do you have a gentle and quiet spirit? It's when you're trusting in God. So how do you do this? What if you don't agree with your husband, what he's planning to do. Can I tell you what you do? If your husband says something, then you pray and you ask God how you can say it in a respectful manner. You can say, honey, I'm not so sure that's the best idea. What do you think about this idea? Then you share your idea. And then if your husband still says, no, I want to do it this way, then you ask this question, have you prayed about it? And then if they say, not yet, say, well, could you pray about it? But you know, of course, I will follow what you say. And you know, when they pray about it, it now makes it not who's going to win, if he's going to win or I'm going to win. We want God to win. You see, Peter and I, it's not his will or my will. We want God's will. So when you do it that way, then leave it in God's hands. What if he still says, no, we'll do it this way? Then what you have to do, ladies, is just submit us unto the Lord and trust Jesus to cause it for good. Maybe it's a lesson he would learn. And if you prove to be right and he was wrong in his decision, you should never say this. What should you never say? I told you so. That's like rubbing it in. Never say that. You say, you know, hon, I know you want to follow God, and I'm sure that through this you've learned, and next time you'll be even more sensitive to his leading. Be positive, because it's not going to who's win. It's going to be that you want God to win. So voluntarily, we submit voluntary to your own husband, ask to the Lord in everything with a gentle and quiet spirit. One day, Peter told me to do something that I really didn't want to do, but he said, no, you have to call this person and cancel our appointment. He left to go to work, and I was so upset. And I was in the bathroom, and I saw this big container of baby powder. And so I got the baby powder, and I started throwing it in the bathroom, and the top was open. So bam, because I was so mad. I was so upset that I had to do this. 
And you know what? He had forgotten something. He came back into the bathroom, and it was full of smoke. And he said, what happened? And I said, oh, I'm so sorry. Uh, I don't know what happened. You know? <laughs> and God caught me. God saw my bad attitude, and he wants us to submit with a gentle and quiet spirit. He didn't know, but God knew, and he caught me in the act. So, ladies, submission is so important to God because it is a command. You see, submission is ultimately not between the wife and the husband, but between us and God. And he commands us to submit, and if we don't submit, we are sinning. Does that make sense, ladies? So submission without respect is not submission at all. So what's our first role? Helpmate. What's our second role? Submit. And now we're going to look at our third role, which is respect. So can you stand up again? Ladies, please stand up. I'm standing. Okay, let's read this verse. And as you read the verse, think about how you're doing. And let the wife see that she respects and reverences her husband, that she notices him, regards him, honors him, prefers him, venerates and esteems him, and that she defers to him, praises him, and loves him exceedingly. This is the amplified version of what it means to respect. So again, on a scale of 1 to 10, how are you doing, ladies? Okay, so God takes this very seriously because it is a command. So respect is so important to a man. You know why? God has put it in him to be respected because as a leader, he needs to be respected. What does a leader need? He needs someone to submit to him. He needs someone to submit to him. The basic fear of a husband is that after he is married, his wife will not respect him. Now, let me ask you this. If a wife is not respecting her husband, you know what happens to the man? He becomes so vulnerable to any woman that's going to respect him. So let me give you a picture. So the husband comes home at night, and he says, I'm home, and nobody's to be seen anywhere. So it's now hide and seek. He has to go find his wife, and she's probably in the kitchen cooking. So cooking adobo, okay? So we smell like garlic, and we look like we've been through the washing machine and dryer. You know, our hair is a mess. And so he tries to hug. He's saying, no, don't do that. I'm busy right now. And so he said, can you get me a cup of coffee? Get it for yourself. Can't you see I'm busy? Okay, so the next morning, he goes to the office. And when he enters the office, his secretary or assistant says, well, good morning, sir. She's dressed nicely. She smells good, and she's smiling. And so he says to his secretary, could you please get me a cup of coffee? And he said, and the secretary goes, of course, sir. Anything else, sir? Okay, ladies. <laughs> this is a problem. Listen to me. When your husband comes home at night, you should be ready for him. You should be showered and ready to meet him. You know, when, our, when Peter would come home at night, all of us would run to the door. When we hear the beep, beep of the horn, all of us kids would run to the door. And my friend and her family did that too. And even the dog was at the door and the helpers. And so <laughs> when he came home, they would say, hi, we're so happy you're home. And that made him feel like such a priority. And our kids still remember that. He needs to know that he is priority and that he is respected. So, ladies, tomorrow you will put on your perfume, right? And you'll be smiling. Okay, sit down. And if your husband says, get you something, say, sure, what else can I do for you? In fact, can I tell you something? In the morning when your husband's about to leave, say, what can I pray for you? And you can ask him, what can I do for you today? And then really do it because that shows him that he's priority, he's respected. Now, I had to grow in this, and I'm still not very good at it all the time. But, you know, when we first got married, Peter would tell me to do something, and I would say, sure. And he'd come home in the evening and say, well, did you do it? And I'd say, oh, I forgot. And then he would say, okay, get a notebook, get a notebook. He's, you know, he's a problem solver. And so I got a notebook. He said, right on the outside, Peter's to-do notebook. I did it. I wrote it. And then he says, now you write inside. This is what you're supposed to do today. I wrote it. And so he came home at night, and he said, did you do it? And I said, I lost the notebook. <laughs> I've come a long way. I'm better, right? Am I better, honey? Improving. Okay. But see, he felt disrespected because I didn't do what he said. I did what everybody else said. 
So ladies, do what they say. Let them know that they're priority. Respect is not earned. This is a misconception. It is based on, it's not based on their behavior. Women will tell me, I'm going to respect him when he acts respectably. No, you respect your husband because it is based on his God-given authority over you as your head. Respect him like you would a boss. You may not like your boss always, but would you respect him? So put it in your mind. You would say, yes, sir. Okay, sir. And respect means making him your priority, as I said. Respect means speaking to him in a respectful manner, watching your body language, tone of voice, and words. So, you know, body language is so important. And when you, your husband says to do something, the last word can be, you can say, you don't want to do it, right? So you say, okay, but you kind of throw your head. <laughs> Have you done that? It's like the last word, okay. R, it's the eyes. Have you done that? You kind of roll your eyes. You know, we have this, we're experts at rolling our eyes. We should not do that. It's very disrespectful. In fact, our speaker, Cassie, on the first day, he said that we should validate our husbands with our eyes. When you look at your husband, you should have respect in your eyes. You should let him know that you really look up to him and you appreciate him. And then also by your words, um, you should, when you speak to him, never criticize him in public. In fact, there should be five compliments for every correction for your husband. And then respect means knowing and meeting his needs. So, the needs of the husband. Authority. They need, a, they have authority. They serve, they lead, they analyze, and they counsel. Have you ever had this experience? You share a problem with your husband, and all you want is a hug, but they start telling you what to do. Have you had that? I remember one time I was, like, telling Peter a problem. He said, okay, you know your problem. You're not spirit-filled. And, boy, I was not spirit-filled when he said that. I was really upset because all I wanted was just a hug. But, ladies, the reason is they are problem solvers. And so we should appreciate that. But you can just tell them, I'm going to share something, but what I want right now is just a hug. That's what I do now. And then he just hugs me, says, I'm sorry. And I say, thank you so much. I feel so much better. Okay. So um, conquests. You know, work is so important to our husbands. That's how they get value in their lives. And they're, they're supposed to be the provider. But sometimes we complain. You come home so late. You're always busy. You know, ladies, can you turn it around? Can you just encourage them? Can you say, I appreciate that you work so hard? Thank you for working hard and bringing home the money for our family. And they also need honor. That's what we, I said. They need a relationship. They want close friendship with us. In fact, they want recreational friendship. Peter loves it when I play golf with him. And my, not all my balls are flying to the right and left, right? I think some go straight. Yes, okay. So we, we walk and talk. It's called walkie-talkie. We walk every day, so we walk and talk. And uh, we swim and we talk. And then they want domestic support, of course. They want to come home to a clean, calm uh, household. And this is a need that's so important. Sexuality is sex. They want an attractive wife. So we are their only option, women. If you don't do it, who else can do it legitimately? Who? Only secretary? No. <laughs> oh, my. See, another reason. You have to fulfill this need. Now, we ladies, we get older, and yes, gravity takes over, but we should be a visual delight, not a visual fright. Okay, don't make it hard for them. Look the best you can at whatever age you are, and be available. You should put it in your mind. This is a privilege that I can do this with my husband, that we can share this together. So don't be like my friend. Okay, she knew she had to have sex when her husband asked. So he came home one night and he wanted sex and she was really, really tired. And so she said, okay, okay. So he went to the bathroom to get ready. And when he came back, she told me she had put this cover over her head and her legs were bent and she had a sign, whatever you do, do quickly. <laughs> Not good, okay. Don't do that because your husbands want you to enjoy and put energy into it. This is very important to your husbands. And let me just close with this. Raise your appreciation. 
and lower expectations in your relationship. This is a key that I don't want you to forget. Raise appreciation, lower expectations. Because what happens before marriage, you have all these plans and everything. And after marriage, it becomes an expectation. You owe this to me. So romance is out the window, and now it's tense. But what you should do is give your expectations to God and ask God to change your husband in areas you'd like. But you look for things to compliment and encourage, any little thing. In fact, there was a time when my almost perfect husband, I was irritated about a few things. We wives can find those few things, right? And I was seeing, I was negative towards him. And I prayed, Lord, let me see him with your eyes. And do you know what? God opened my eyes to see how he sees him. And I saw all the things that I had forgotten, all the things that had made me fall in love with him in the first place. And then I started to compliment him. And can I tell with you, make a list and review that list. And then every day, think of one way you can say something positive to him. Don't be like my friend. I told her this, and she said, you know what, Diana? I can't think of one thing. Not one. I said, what? You can't think of anything to say positive about your husband? No. So I said, we thought of something. So then I told her, so this week, you use that one thing to compliment him, and I will check with you next week. The next week came, and I said, so did you compliment him? And she said, Diana, I tried so hard to compliment him, but it got stuck in my throat. It wouldn't come out. <laughs> so many of us have stuck up throats. Ladies, by the power of the Spirit, look for something positive to encourage your husband, make it a habit, and you will see that your family will be predictably joyful by the power of the Spirit. So what are our roles, ladies? First role? Help me. What's the second? Submit. What's the third? Respect. And we do this unto God because this is his command, and this is how we will have the family that will be a lighthouse to the world to show what a Christian family is like. God bless you. Men. What is our role? Leader, lover. Ladies, what's your role? Helpmate, submit, respect. Now, if you understand this, this is what's going to happen in your marriage. Many times, relationships develop problems. Can I tell you why? Husband fails to show love. Because you love your wife, but you don't know how to show it, okay? So the wife reacts. When the wife reacts, she will be, perhaps she won't show respect. Because she's disrespectful, the husband reacts by withdrawing. Now, when the husband withdraws, the wife goes into panic mode because she wants the husband to love her. But the husband is withdrawing. So this crazy cycle, the wife will now react. She wants to solve the problem. And because she's reacting negatively, the husband will again react negatively. So this crazy cycle will spiral, spiral, spiral down. And that's why many marriages are in trouble. I suggest from now on, you reverse it. For example, if the husband fails to show you love, ladies, you should rethink. Perhaps he loves me. He loves me for sure but he does not know how to show love. So you continue respect. Don't react with disrespect. Now, when you show respect, your husband will feel good. And she rea he will realize, you know what? My wife respects me. He will not withdraw. He will move closer to you. And when he moves closer to you, you begin to realize, you know what? My <coughs> husband loves me, and then you will not nag. So your cycle will go up. Do you, do you understand what I'm saying? Yes. This crazy cycle is happening to many marriages. Because, ladies, you need to understand, men do not fight you. We don't fight women. We just withdraw. The moment you show disrespect, the moment you start nagging, men will withdraw. They withdraw not because they don't love you, but that's their nature. They don't fight women. But gentlemen, the moment you withdraw, the moment you are silent, the moment you don't reach out to your wife, your wife will think you don't love her. She becomes insecure. The moment she becomes insecure, she begins to nod. She begins to act differently, maybe not respect you. So that cycle will begin again. Okay? So, gentlemen, you have two main jobs. Number one, lead. You're responsible. Number two, love. 
I just wanted to add one thing about submission, which is very important. It's for our protection. That's why God said we are to submit to our husbands, because it's for our protection. Can you say that? It's for our protection. Yeah, so I don't want you to forget that, and I want it to be in the video, because I have had many experiences. When I have not followed him, I've got into a lot of trouble. So just remember, it's like an umbrella for your protection. So, men, your assignment today is this, okay? If you're beside your wife, are you beside your wife now? So you guys on this table, you can uh, move. What do you do? You hold her hand. You hug her, okay? You hug. And then hold, 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 hold. Yeah. You hug, hug, okay? Hug, hug. That's your chance now. I know you've been wanting to hug her for the longest time. You, you hug now, okay? okay? Can I give another assignment? Okay, can you another. say something positive to each other now? Just one thing. One compliment, husband and wife to each other, okay? okay right now, my right wife now. says, say right something now. positive right now. That you appreciate about them. Now, those of you who are not married, when you go home, you say something positive to your parents. Is that okay with you? Say something positive to your parents. Say something positive to your children, okay? That's your assignment, positive. All right, sir. Here's a situation. The husband divorced the wife to marry another woman. The wife later on got involved with a man who's also separated. Twenty years into the relationship, both came to know the Lord Jesus and committed to abstain from sexual relations outside of marriage. The man is now having his marriage annulled in court. Can they get married when and if annulment is granted to make the relationship right before God's eyes? Okay, this is what I call a scrambled egg. See, they have been living together for 20 years already. They want to make it right. I'm not legalistic. I'm a pastor. Do they have children? Not mentioned. But do you see what I'm saying? The first husband is already separated. Probably he has his own wife. There's no way they can be back together. So you make the most of the situation. So in that condition, I would say... Uh, it's not ideal, but it's the best. Understand? Under the circumstances. So usually in CCF, they will probably be asked to just get a civil wedding. Why a civil wedding? So that no talk, no nothing. Then they want to have a celebration. No problem, have a celebration. But in God's eyes, you should not feel guilty. In God's eyes, you are making it right. Because a sin committed in the past does not mean now you will not be forgiven. <coughs> You see, you made something, you did something wrong in the past. And now you come to Christ. So I don't see any problem there. All right, last one question for the evening. What can you say about wives earning more than their husbands? Would it be okay for the wives to work and the husband to stay at home? No, this is very common today. The wives make more money than the husband. If you ask me, it is not the best, but the reality is the wife makes more money, and I believe the husband should not be lazy. The husband should not stop working because my wife and I have many cases where the wife decides to homeschool, so she stopped working. In almost every instance, the salary of the man gets doubled, gets tripled. What happened? It's called miracles. It's called God's economy. I believe in the Word of God. I believe if you follow the Word of God, He will bless you. How He does it, I don't know how. But if you don't follow the Word of God, you follow human wisdom, you will not experience the miracles of God. And I like to believe you want to experience supernatural divine intervention in your lives. So the only way you will experience divine intervention is to follow God's design and God's way. It may not make sense. A wife making a lot of money. And now she's going to quit and let the man work. Well, God promised to provide for our needs. Yes or no? And secondly, what's your value? Is it money? Or do you want to model a godly home? It's all about value system, value proposition. If your priority is money, 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 I'm going to tell you, you may make a lot of money, but what's going to happen to your family? What's the model you're giving to your children? 
OFW. They said they need to go abroad and make money. Sure, if money is the most important. But what's the use of money you send to the Philippines when your children become messed up or your wife gets involved with affairs? So my question is you need to think biblically and act biblically. And now that sometimes means you pay a price. You may make less money. But so what? If you make less money, but you have more spiritual blessing, look at me. How long will you live your life on earth? How many years? 70, 80, 90? What is the most important? Is it living for God? Pleasing God? Is it giving your children spiritual heritage? I tell all the men, your main priority, teach your children the ways of the Lord. Let them fall in love with God. That legacy, money cannot buy. What's the use of having money and your children and your family is a mess? I would just say that when a man is not working, since that's where he gets a lot of his self, um, you know, fulfillment, what happens if the wife is now earning and she becomes dominant and the wife is, the husband is staying at home, he looks for affirmation other places. And many times it deteriorates into an affair because he wants to be respected. And so this is something that's very dangerous. And the Bible says that the wife is to be the worker at home. And if a wife is making more, they're both working, well, praise God. But she should, the guy should not abdicate and then let her take over his role as the leader and provider of the family. Uh, one other answer to the question about what do you do if you see your relatives are not really teaching their children the way of God, you know, disciplining them. We have a lot of activities. We have retreats, parenting seminars, counterflow. You can also invite them, hey, come and listen to these speakers. These are great about parenting. So, you know, use also what CCF is doing, couples retreats, parenting seminars. You can do that also to help your relatives. Okay, thanks. Thanks.